Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is part two of my Unify Access huge install series. Uh, in the first video, we kind of covered um, everything that we we're going to be doing, kind of the plans that I had. Um, and I have to say a lot of those plans did stay the same, but we also changed a lot. So let's get started. Before this video begins, I do want to quickly mention that I'm now offering IT and network consulting. Um, I do a lot with Ubiquity, Free Radius, Proxmox, anything you can think of. It's all on my website, so go check it out. And I look forward to working with you. In this video, we'll be talking about the install related topics, um, the hardware that we used, how we got it installed, all that kind of stuff. And in the final part, kind of part three, we'll discuss kind of the growing pains that we are experiencing now with a key fob based system. So let's start off with hardware. Uh, first of all, uh, specifically in the broadcast video studio, this is the door that has the Unify Access Ultra. Um, and that's going to be the video or the room I was in at the beginning of the last video. Um, I'll show some clips on the screen. Essentially what we ended up doing, we got some raceway, ran this across. We had a new rack that we recently installed in a recent video. Actually, we had the rack, we ran an ethernet cable down to that and through the wall for the reader. Um, and then we actually um, bought this strike on Amazon, which is a 2025 upgraded. I don't know what the heck that means. Anyways, it is a electric strike that is powered from 12 or 24 volts. Um, and you'll see it's just a standard door strike. There's nothing special to it. Um, nothing at all. It, literally just the most basic door strike I could find from Amazon at the cheapest price. Um, and the reason for this is because if you guys remember, this door is actually offset. So the latch is kind of offset from the um, actual standard spot of a normal latch. So this door looks a little different um, in terms of how we can actually allow the latch to unlock. And I do have to give full credit to my buddy who actually did this. Uh, he actually was able to um, kind of change the plate and he had a drill press and stuff and he drilled out a new plate that essentially shifted the actual strike down um, in the same mounting screws for the frame. Really cool, worked out really well. And that's what you'll see on the screen. So it's the same strike that you can see from the Amazon listing, except it is shifted down. The next door is the door kind of on the edge of the building. Um, it is the door that is having the G3 reader. Um, and this one is pretty straightforward. Honestly, this is going to be in line with a lot of the other doors that you will see in the video. So we've got the crash bar on the door, as you'll see in the clip. Uh, but we also have a um, G3 reader mounted to a electrical box right outside of the door. And that's how people are accessing the door. They're getting into that. And then I, I didn't, sorry, I'm not taking credit for this poor work, but the um, building staff <laughs> actually ran the raceway down the wall. Um, kind of interestingly, uh, the drill or the holes like offset for some reason, and then the raceway is kind of crooked, whatever. I didn't do that. So that's how that door is getting fed. We have two wires going to that door. We have ethernet for the reader. We have a 18 gauge wire for the actual um, electric uh, push bar to be powered from. I um, mean, that's working really well. It's probably a little less than 100 feet. Um, but the crash bar is getting power from that. And the crash bar is actually really interesting in, in the sense that when we had this installed, the door guys actually said that it does not matter the polarity that you power this at. So somehow in the actuator or something, it is actually, it, it doesn't matter the, the positive or negative or, you know what I'm saying? It could be flipped. So kind of cool. Um, but that crash bar was like $1,700, I believe. Honestly, it's expensive, but not too bad. Uh, a lot of other quotes we found were like five grand. Um, and this one's working really well. It looks identical to another door that I'll show you later. And um, overall, really happy with this one turned out pretty nicely on the outside. And that's about it. The next door is this door that has the G3 Reader Pro. This is a um, one that we had to completely replace the crash bar in again with that $1,700 crash bar. Um, so the door company did that. They also did that little pigtail thing you'll see to this um, lower left hand area. And that pigtail is what connects the crash bar to our 18 gauge wire that we ran through the attic ourselves. Um, the door company could have done this, but we decided to do it ourselves because it was a lot easier um, and cheaper, I guess. So we did that and um, you'll see there's raceway. I did that raceway. Um, it's a little crooked, but anyways, um, <laughs> I tried. And uh, so on this door, we just had PoE uh, ethernet for the um, G3 Reader Pro. And then we have the 18 gauge wire again for the crash bar. So pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, and then we actually got the um, angled mount for the G3 Reader Pro. So we don't have a um, electrical box out there at all. It is just angle mounted to the side of the building and that's working out better. Originally we did have the um, electrical box, but it didn't look real good and it was pretty low. So it got shifted up and shifted out. That way the camera was facing the person trying to get in the door, which makes a lot more sense. Another thing with this, uh, this is in the same picture that you'll see as the other door that we looked at uh, with the G3 uh, reader, um, same power supply, they're actually shared. And um, 
same fuse box also again shared uh, but it is specced out for all the doors in that section of the building to receive power and i guess fuses from um, so it is future proofed again okay moving on uh, this is the main door now and this door is the um most important one to look nice because it is what everybody's going to see so this is the door with the g3 intercom and it is a huge device um, i can't get a great video clip of it but i'll put it on the screen um, and you'll see the wall is a bit scratched up behind it. There was some signage that was originally there. So um, it's kind of covering the spot of the signage, but there's a lot of scratches outside of it. So it is what it is. But the G3 intercom has been really cool. Um, it is, it's working pretty well. There's still some bugs in Unify OS, honestly. Um, and it's kind of frustrating because like you can set schedules for when the calls are received, um, but the scheduling system doesn't seem to work at all. So, um, and same for the delayed, um, a tree i guess of people getting the calls um like there's like a 10 second option 20 second 30 second option those options don't seem to do anything it just seems like everybody gets the call at the same time which is kind of frustrating um we are coming from an old pbx system and um it was at least it did have the like wait three rings wait four rings etc and then the store is the same it's got the crash bar the pigtail all that kind of stuff uh and this one um, it's powered from something that's like probably 40 feet away um, cable wise pretty close but the power supply is spec'd out for all of the eight doors at that area so theoretically we could do eight crash bars on the entire area and kind of get everything to be controlled by one controller which would be kind of cool um, so it's future proofed the fuses again are future proof they support enough for each door individually um, and that's that's about it okay moving on to the uh, other door this door actually kind of has like a man trap area i don't know what it's for what the name is but anyways this area does um, have the g3 reader pro it is a lot harder to mount this because it does kind of this area sticks out of the building a little bit for the entrance so um to there's like metal pole or metal framing around the glass really hard to get that in there so um props to the maintenance guy who made this happen but he did the angle mount again for this door for the pro reader um, and then he ran the cables inside, did raceway up into the ceiling. It's drop ceiling really easy. So he ran that over then probably 20 feet for the wire. Um, and this again is spec'd out for all of the doors to be on the fuse box, the power spot, etc. Um, and we just have the standard, um, hub, just like you've seen on the other doors as well. So not like the minis that we did for the first two doors, but this one has a full size hub. Um, and there's really no reason for this. I just got a couple pro kits and a couple of standard kits. And that's just what we ended up using, honestly. Either kit would have worked for either application. It doesn't really matter. And the kits just saved money on the readers and stuff, essentially. So that's why we got the kits. So one other fun part is we actually added another door onto this project midway through. Um, this door is actually the one for like kind of a more secure tech area. Um, and this one is going to be using a magnetic strike. Um, the reason we went with a magnetic strike is because the area around it is actually an area where there's going to be like guests. So we want it to be super quiet when they access the door. We don't want to hear a clicking from a standard um, door strike. Um, so we moved the magnet. We actually had it on the front door uh, originally on the old PBX system. Um, so we moved that mag strike over onto the um, door for this tech area and it's working pretty well. It's really, really hard to get that aligned. Honestly, um, I had to redrill the hole once. I'm not super proud of it. I could have measured it out more, but in hindsight, I don't know how particular it had to be. So anyways, it works and uh, it locks in there nicely. Um, the reader is also really hard to mount because of the framing around the door. We could have mounted the reader in another spot, but it's kind of it's kind of just hard again. Um, but the reader, you scan it, it works, obviously, door opens. Um, and we did have to add a motion sensor on the inside, which does prevent it from locking right away after you walk in. But the motion sensor allows for emergency situations where you have to leave quickly. It's simpler than teaching people how to use a button because I think you'd be surprised on how many people would struggle to figure out how to use a button. But that is pretty much what we've got going on. Um, that tech booth door, um, again, is just a door hub mini that I got um, with a standard G3 reader. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, a lot of door hub minis, I really do like the door hub minis. They've got all of the pins that I actually think are useful. The door hub, like the full size one, a lot of them don't even matter for simpler applications like the one I'm talking about right now. Um, but the minis just have enough for what we need. And they still have two Ethernet ports, which is pretty cool. That's going to lead me to my last point here. You should stay tuned, uh, get subscribed for the next video in this series where I talk about Unify Access, the growing pains that we're having, all the issues with Unify Access um, on a personnel basis uh, at this site. 
um, but also just digitally and on unified access, kind of the issues that we're having with that as well. So stay tuned, hope you enjoyed. Leave comments if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, I'm pretty pumped with how this turned out. It all was executed in the matter of just a couple weeks and I think it worked out pretty well. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys uh, whenever I come out with part three.